I've just finished my day. We were kind of filming short film-ish scenes. It was a bit like, but not really. It was more, we were sort of more like doing parts of a TV series, just individual scenes. But it wasn't for a TV series. It was for an acting program. It was their, one of the more prestigious acting programs in New Zealand. It was for their final sort of end of year projects that they were doing. They were coming onto an actual TV series set. Um, actually, New Zealand's longest running TV series is very, very, very well known here. And um, they were acting on it, I guess, to for the experience. So they would know how the rhythm on the set works. Um, because obviously it's very different acting in sort of student staff, computer acting and professional set. So we were just, they were trying to emulate that process to be as similar as possible for them, especially as so many graduates of that acting program do end up working as actors as some of the first things in the acting career on this um, film set, because there are lots of um, New Zealand actors early on in their career quite often are acting and in this TV series that's been running so, so long and it, it needs a lot of actors for different storylines and such. Um, so they were pretty much trying to run everything as similar to how it really would go for the actual TV series during the week as we are doing today on a Saturday. Um, except, um, I guess in the case of the sound department, we were in a little bit. I mean, the camera department was sort of similar in the sense that they were running three cameras at once, multi-camera, because they really do go very fast paced, so they might often get a whole scene in a single take because they're, they've got three cameras on, on studio pedestals sort of sliding around on big zoom, just snapping off a bunch of shots really quickly and they can cover a whole scene in just like one take like that. Um, but for us, the way it's normally done on this TV series, I mean, I occasionally work here just as a casual person filling in for a few days now or then. Now or then. So I, I have a rough idea of how they work. And they normally have one person here in the control room, or rather the control room is just the other side of that window over there. And that's where um, like the script supervisor and the visual editor, they do, they do live cuts and so forth and whatever, um, and technical director. Then over here is, is the sound room where um, they will be doing the mix um, while, while they're shooting. Because, um, yeah, they, they pretty much make stuff not quite in the can while, you, while they're shooting it, but they, they, they get it, they do very minimal editing, um, sort of very minimal editing for very quick turnaround. So yeah, they, they, get, they get the mix off and just done here while they're shooting uh, to, to a certain extent. And so they would have like two booms, uh, one being a fisher boom, so that's that sort of crane thing you might see. It's only fisher booms in New Zealand are the ones here on this set here in Auckland. Um, but yeah, Fisher Booms are more common, say over in LA or wherever on, on sitcoms and such. Um, so they'd have one Fisher Boom and then another person just like with a normal boom pole, you know, like what I brought along for myself today. And then the the sound mixer will be in here um, sort of you know, in charge of, you know, getting the, getting the good audio mix that's coming from the, the two boom sources. But yeah, because it's a bit scaled down, the plan for today was going to be just two people, one person on the boom, probably mostly the Fisher boom, aside from the steady cam parts of the day. And yeah, one person on the Fisher boom and one person here in the, in the control uh, room at the uh, sound mixing desk. And yeah, the Fisher boom is, is pretty awesome. You can, you can definitely cover quite a lot if, if, um, if it works for that scene. I mean, obviously you can't for a steady cam shot, but um, so yeah, that, that was the plan. And so I was quite looking forward to this because I was going to be the guy here you know, mixing my, well, one fader <laughs> from the Fisher Boom and just, just running the stuff on this side of it. Um, only for the other half of the sound apartment, he he got COVID, unfortunately. So I got a message late last night saying, ah, sorry, I've got COVID. Um, yeah, just, and I sort of, we came up with a plan. So how I would just do it by myself. So yeah, that's why I've brought along my recorder here. Rather than the normal way it's done, is that you've got the mixing desk up here and it goes over into the PIX 270i from Standard Vices. It is the previous generation before the latest one, which is the, the Standard Vices 970, which sadly they've discontinued. But there was the, the, rack, the rack unit recorders 
and I think this can do like 32 tracks and the 9070 can do 64 tracks so yeah even the Scorpio can't do as many as that as, as Max is out at uh, 32 ISOs anyway and then uh, they've got here below it the venue um, yeah so they don't actually need that many channels because they do just basically run only the two booms and it's pretty rare that they will run um, wireless when they're in the studio generally just those two um, from the boom uh, yeah the, the Fisher boom and the just the normal boom pole um, although even then it's generally only the fit the normal boom pole that's wireless because the Fisher boom can actually be hardwired and go back to here because I've got sort of a snakes that sends stuff to here and communications back and they have up here um, you know, this is like the walkie-talkies of Fiji. You can hear if, you, if I turn it up, you can hear just the hiss floor of the walkie-talkie and then if somebody starts talking, it will, it will appear back there. Um, so that's sort of the rough background of what's going over here. And this time code we see on it, that comes from the AVID system over on the other side of the window. And they've got their master time code because it gets record it not on the cameras I mean I think it gets recorded on the cameras as well but but really their main workflow is the stuff that gets recorded directly to Avid over there and that's synced up this their Avid system to another master time code over there and Avid sends out time code to this and they have sort of a setup with um yeah time code to here and another one of these but I really just jammed it straight to my 833 here out of this Lemo time code coming back out of the BNC output of this. So that just makes me synced up with them nicely. Because, um, yeah, otherwise, I think normally the tracks get recorded to here as a backup, but they also get sent probably over Dante to be recorded directly onto the tracks with Avid. So it's all just like super fast, easy workflow for them. But obviously that wasn't possible today because I couldn't be sitting here running this. Um, so I had to be out on that actual floor over there just wearing this. So I really decided as I'm going to be running the whole thing all by myself and um, and they are very fast paced. So like you might have noticed I haven't mentioned any wireless labs being used. That's because they just have so many actors come on and off. And just people switching in and out. There really isn't time with the amount of manpower you have. Um, even when you have three people in the sound apartment like you normally have. But of course today it wasn't three people. It was just me by myself. So yeah, you really don't have time to put labs on people and get all those tweaked down. So that's why they run everything just on those two booms. In my case, just the single boom. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I thought, let's try, it's all gonna be just like fast paced on my feet all day. Let's keep my bag as lightweight as possible. So you've probably seen my bag in some other videos. I'm gonna run a bit bigger bag. Although if you saw my previous bag, I was actually running my Zaxcon Max, which I really liked for that shoot, because it was so lightweight. I quite like my Zaxcon Max, because it is lighter than this, um, the 833. But it also runs through like a lot less power. So like this, a single one of these was basically a whole day. And that's 95 watt hours. I actually wait, no, sorry. My bad. It's 66 watt hours. So yeah, a single one of those. It's enough for like a whole day with Zaxcon Max. And even powering my my, my actual wireless. Yeah, that, that is the Sony Digital I run. Um, but yeah, so for me though, I actually had to swap that battery um, before lunch so it, it really runs like two or three times more power hungry than the Zaxcon Max and it is it is also a little bit heavier like than the weight of the Max recorder but yeah anyway um, so yeah I'll just show you very simply how it is it just really is recording that one track and then I was um, uh, yeah recording the one track and I've got the mix there well mix <laughs> It's really just a post fader with a noise reduction applied to it that's then sent to the output. Um, this this uh, output here goes to a uh, Little Sonics LT transmitter. It's an IFB mode so that then these IFBs in block 20 can be listened to by the, um, the director. Because, yeah, normally the director, pretty much only the director, has one of these at their video cut, video village over on the studio floor 
and the people over there can listen directly to what's being fed out of the PIX recorder to them. But um, we couldn't do that workflow, of course, today because it was only me by myself. So I had to, yeah, I got a few each of one of these and I gave each of them those so they could listen to it. And, um, yeah, what was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah, I ran it, like, last time I ran it to one milliwatt. I did run my um, transmitter on my boom that I'm running a MKH-50. Um, I did run it on um, 10 milliwatts today instead of 1 milliwatts, just thought, just, I mean, I know it didn't mean one more battery change, but it just meant I just wanted to be a little bit more confident because it's a lot more wireless running around on this set than the short film I did the other day, um, such as the follow focus or wireless trans video transmitters and such. Um, but yeah, it was all fine, like it was completely rock solid all day long, um, even with that transmitter going out on block 20. Um, and yeah, what was what I going to say? Oh yeah, so I'm just running into the XL AES, which is expansion here, so I can take the digital a, um, AES output straight into here. Um, and oh yeah, I just have this little like card to separate the two. And if I am outside, which I wasn't today, that just provides a bit of a sunshade too at the same time. And it just also means I don't scratch either of these. Um, yeah, and of course up in the front, that's where I have my little mini um, battery distribution system. i got a smaller one rather than the normal battery bud cable techniques one I use. And then that's the battery cup for the um, BPU-60 that I've got sitting inside the bag. 